Okay. Oh, hello guys. Uh, it's uh, it's been a while, and welcome to my uh, YouTube channel once again. And today, we're going to start a new project. Uh, this is an art adventure. I am starting this uh, um, this video as a uh, drawing. Uh, <laughs> drawing video for me and I will uh, start making concept arts with this uh, particular channel and also adding some new um, backgrounds or thumbnails for my uh, future videos so this is a concept art I'm trying to uh, make so that I can put it as my uh, desktop background also as a thumbnail for my uh, Monster Hunter Rise uh, videos so also uh, it's not just an ordinary um, drawing video or an art or painting video it's just it's also going to be a uh, uh, a story video because there's a light novel or what you may say a audiobook playing on the background while I'm doing my my art <laughs> So that's why the the title art with adventure because uh, we're going to have an adventure while doing my my drawing here. So uh, this will be my first time doing this uh, a live stream and a live stream painting or con uh, doing a concept art. So right now uh, I'm going to start with using a uh, here we are okay. So, let's get rid of the music and let's start this, start this art. <laughs> so I have my, what should we call this, I have my, uh, oh, I think I picked the wrong, okay. What's happening? Why won't it, <laughs> the scops man. Okay, here we go. So I have my uh, reference sheet in a different in a different uh, window. I am preparing my uh, the styles that I'm going to apply here. So I'm what I'm going to draw today is uh, my character uh, that I am using in Monster Hunter Rise, and I'm going to uh, put her on a a beach scene where with uh with my avatar and it's going to be a uh a landscape uh proportion uh, yeah a landscape proportions 1920 by 1080 uh frame size so let's start okay here we go 300 resolution nice so let's just change this back uh color into something grayish I really don't like my back, uh, my canvas to be fear white. It hurts your eyes. And also, right now we're gonna, I'm gonna start doing the sketch. Oh, by the way, uh, we're going to start the algae book after I done the introductions of it. <laughs> so about the algae book I'm going to play right now. Uh, I'm using a a website called uh, novels.pl. Here I'm going to show you the the website. So this is the website that I usually use when I am drawing. I keep listening to audio books while doing my designs because uh, most of the times um, designing is very boring <laughs> uh, for me, I might say, because uh, yeah, it's tedious work. Uh, it's a repetitive action. So a lot of times uh, I would need some music. I would need something to entertain me while I'm doing my designing. And at the same time, I enjoy listening to stories while doing it. So I discovered this website and ever since I've, uh, I could remember doing my uh, personal, personal work or doing my design for work, uh, I listen to audio books because they're very entertaining and it helps me get over my boredom while doing my designs. And it also helps me to be inspired, keep me uh, going forward with um, some new idea ideas and stuff so this is the story we're going to read today uh, the dead mage with who doesn't want a fourth time 
So this is a very fun story because I've read this before already, and I think I believe I were on chapter 270 or something. Not very sure how uh, where am I already. <laughs> so it, there is a some new chapters that was added, but I'm planning to go back to chapter one. So let's go to chapter one over here, and here we are. Ah. Uh, there's actually a prologue so uh for the background of the story um there's the description i've i wrote down on the, this uh yeah on this uh, <laughs> on the video down below so you can just read it so, or you can read it right now if you can pause or something this is the description of the story now basically what i've read about this it's a an isekai anime and it has a good revenge story and i love the world building and uh, it's all it's about gods and peop uh and some uh necromancy stuff also <laughs> and there's a lot of uh superstitious things and stuff that monsters and and things that you would enjoy in a fantasy style uh, kind of genre so uh if you're very uh, you're interested in this kind of genre, I hope you would enjoy listening to this while I do my designing. So let's go for chapter one, prologue. Here we go. Prologue, the end of the first and second time. The ship that the students of Yasako High School were on for their field trip. I think that's very low. Uh, let me just adjust this. Okay. Uh, just a minute, guys. I'm gonna double check. Okay, we have a filter. Okay. So, uh, let's go. Uh, so, prologue. Sank due to a bomb planted by terrorists. Let me put that in the prologue. Beginning. The end of the first and second time. Oops, I forgot. Uh, by the way, guys, <laughs> um, I'm going to play this at 1.15 speed. It's not too slow and not too fast. I like it in this uh, kind of uh, settings. I usually do the settings in a good, uh, really good story that I want to read uh, in a minimum s minimum speed. Uh, there are some few stories I've read with 1.13 that is that has a lot of chapters, and I want to get over with the story already. So this is uh, my settings, 1.15. So yeah. I hope you guys would uh, uh, enjoy this uh, prologue. Him. The ship that the prologue, the end of the first and second time. Okay, that's better. The ship that the students of Yasako High School were on for their field trip sank due to okay. a bomb planted by terrorists. In this tragic incident, 102 casualties, crewmen and passengers lost their lives, not counting the terrorists. Ah. Seeing that the cold, salty water has disappeared, I guess I've died as well. Amemiya Hiroto felt a deep numbness as he became aware of his own death. He was in a faintly lit place and there were a lot of other people gathered here as well. It wasn't as simple as floating in the Sanzu River with beautiful fields of flowers awaiting them on the other side. But this was likely something like the entrance to the afterlife. The other people were showing a variety of reactions to being dead. Some were crying, some consoling each other and others were showing relief that their friends or loved ones weren't here with them. Hiroto, too, wanted to cry out that he didn't want to die, that he wanted to keep living, but he couldn't muster the energy to do so. Ha in the end, I died in vain, ha. Hiroto, the reason he said that was that he had spotted a female classmate sitting in a spot a short distance away from him. She was Naru's Narumi. She was the mood maker of the class, known by her nickname, Naru. Hiroto had died to save her. When the ship lurched and began to capsize, Narumi had failed to grab hold of a handrail and looked like she was going to fall. Hiroto had seized her hand immediately and helped her grab the handrail and then he had rolled down the diagonally inclined floor in her place, landed on his back against the wall and fallen into the sea to drown. It had happened in an instant, it was not been something that he had thought about and decided on doing. Thinking about it now, it seemed like a reckless thing to do. Even so, if she had been saved by his actions, he would at least have been able to console himself, but, no, I think I acted like a good person before I died. Hiroto, even if Hiroto died, nobody would mourn for him anyway. He had lost his parents when he was young and he had no blood-related siblings. 
He had a poor relationship with his uncle's family on his father's side, who had adopted him. He had even been told comma get out after you graduate high school. He didn't have any friends or a girlfriend. His uncle would be receiving the remainders of Hiroto's inheritance from his parents and condolence money for this incident, so he could consider the favor of adopting him as having been repaid. In fact, it was more than enough repayment considering his uncle's abuse the clear discrimination from his own biological children, the way Hiroto had been treated until now. His dreams of the future had only consisted of something vague like become happy. It would be fine if that dream would be granted in heaven. At the very least, his uncle and that family wouldn't be here. However, reality was irrational and not so lenient. You souls who have lost your lives once already, you have been chosen. I will now grant you special power, a new destiny and new fortune. Using these, I wish for you to live new lives in a world separate from the you lived on. God. Gods were probably those kinds of beings. A mysterious person with a halo over his head appeared and made this declaration to the people here. It seemed that instead of heaven, what awaited them was the endless circle of transmigration. They were further surprised at the news that they would be reborn into another world. Of course, you may refuse my request. If you choose to do so, you will lose all memories of your previous life and be reborn somewhere else on earth, as is normal. Those of you hope for this, I would like you to come forward now. God, Hiroto wondered who would refuse in this situation, but there was one boy who refused. Hiroto was a little far away from that boy, so he was unable to hear what the boy said to the god. But the god said comma well then, you may return to the normal circle of transmigration. And the boy disappeared, so he knew that the boy had refused the god's offer. Of course, Hiroto, like the rest of the people here, were intending to accept the god's offer. They would receive some special power, be born in a new world to a new family and be happy. No other scenario could offer more hope than this. Well then, as I call your name, please come and stand in front of me. Indakuya. God, Shinmari. God, Naruz Narumi. God, Mifuji Kanata. God, Minami Asagi. God, one after another, they had their names called out and received their special powers, destinies and fortunes from the god before leaving the room. Narumi's name was called out, too. But now about half of the people had already left, and Hiroto's name was still not being called. Amemiya. Amemiya Hiroto. God, for a moment, Hiroto thought that he had been called, but it seemed that wasn't the case. Someone with a very similar name stepped forward to stand in front of the god. Amemiya? Hiroto, it was a name that Hiroto had never heard before. Even if they were in different classes. They were in the same school, so it seemed unlikely that he didn't know someone with such a similar name. Was it a passenger who happened to be riding on the ship at the same time as them, or was it one of the crew? He looked like he was in his late teenage years even their physiques were similar. If even their faces were similar, surely he must be Hiroto's doppelganger or some long-lost sibling. The others had received one or two, at most three special powers from the god. As Hiroto observed, Amemiya Hiroto received no fewer than eight special powers. They were quite large powers, too. There were even two destinies and two fortunes, but the god combined them into one before handing them to him. To receive not just two, but eight special powers. The god must truly love this person. As this thought occurred to Hiroto, the god continued, calling out the next person. And soon, Hiroto was the only one left. You are? God, finally, the god noticed Hiroto. I'm Amemiya Hiroto. Hiroto, the god sounded puzzled, so Hiroto told him his name. However, this only seemed to surprise the god further. Amemiya Hiroto? Not Amemiya? Your surname is Amemiya, written as Shrine of Heaven, and your given name is Hiroto, written as Knowledgeable Person? God, that's right. Hiroto, with a bad feeling, Hiroto gave this answer to the god, confirming the spelling of his name. And then the god gave a groan. Oh dear your names are similar, so I made a mistake. I thought you and Amemiya Hiroto were the same person. All of the special powers that were supposed to be given to you, I unfortunately gave them to Amemiya Hiroto. And even the destiny that was supposed to be given to you and the good fortune that was to keep you safe, I had given to him. God, it was an honest mistake that had occurred through pure coincidence. The time that Hiroto had first thought his name had been called, it seemed to have occurred then. But Amemiya Hiroto is no longer here so I cannot have him return your share, nor can I prepare new powers for you. The same goes for your destiny and fortune. God, so in other words, I'm the only one who has to start from zero with nothing? Hiroto, no, you will be starting from a negative position. 
You will never be saved by destiny or coincidence, nor will you ever be blessed with good fortune. God, not even a start from zero, but a negative start. Wasn't this a little too much? In that case, I'll give up on this. Please return me to the normal circle of transmigration, like that other person earlier. Hiroto, even if he were to be reborn in a new world, it seemed now that he would face only hardships, so Hiroto was ready to completely give up on this rebirth. But the god shook his head. The time of confirming your intentions has already passed. God, are you serious? Hiroto, Hiroto no longer had the ability to refuse. He was ready to raise his objections, to say that these kinds of rules couldn't exist, but his body began to be surrounded in light and his consciousness started fading away. It seems the time for your rebirth has come. God, no way. Isn't it too much for me to be the only one to start with nothing? In exchange, your soul has a large empty frame that is different from the others that are being reborn. In place of special powers, Thai's empty frame will likely contain a tremendous amount of mana within your body. Though since you have no aptitude for magic, you will not be able to learn any of the magical attributes that exist in the world you are about to be reborn into common origin. Therefore, it will be quite wasted on you. God, are those supposed to be words of comfort? To have mana and not be able to use magic, it really is a complete waste. I do feel terrible for you. Without special powers, a destiny or fortune, I am sure you will experience many hardships. You will be unable to grow up in a happy environment. Your future prospects will also be limited because you cannot use magic. You will be tormented by an even greater sense of loneliness than you experienced in your previous life, in your hopelessness, you will struggle to breathe and suffer greatly. But I want you to look forward and live on without giving up or resenting anyone. God, you make it sound so easy. Without even being able to shout his protests, Amamiya Hirota began his second life. The God Rod Corti. The new world he had sent Hiroto and the others was called Origin. It was similar to Earth, but it was a world where science and magic blended into each other. The hundred people reborn in Origin were in wonder at the differences between this world and Earth. They were born to new parents, saved by various moments of good fortune, made use of the special powers they had been granted and reunited with each other and recognized one another through their destinies. They kept their rebirth a secret amongst themselves, but before they knew it, they were known as the Hundred Heroes. Excluding the 101st person. Rod Corti was the god who ruled over the circle of transmigration for the souls of many worlds, including Earth and Origin. He was not directly worshipped by the people, and he didn't entrust anything to clergymen. Nor was he able to directly intervene by descending onto a world to perform miracles. What he was capable of doing was controlling the circle of transmigration of souls and, very occasionally, altering it. However, he had almost never made any alterations to the circle before. This was because the system of the circle of transmigration was very well made, there were almost no situations that required Rod Corti to adjust it. However, a problem had occurred recently. The circle of transmigration for one of the worlds that he managed was slower than those of the other worlds. While the other worlds were proceeding as normal, this problematic world had come to a standstill for quite some time. Magic, martial arts, literature, science engineering, art, cuisine. A repetitive pattern was occurring in a wide variety of fields where development would happen, but then be lost soon after. The countries repeatedly went to war with one another, a thousand years passed with no progress to show for it. From time to time a hero would appear in one of two smaller countries that had been at war would win and absorb the loser to form a single, larger country, but such larger countries were Okay guys, uh, sorry about the pause. Uh, so this is uh, a rough sketch of what I'm planning to do. This is a uh, landscape kind of style. Uh, it's on a beach uh, with a tent with a ruins at the very far off of the, of the, of the beach. Uh, yeah, and I will put the, a main character over here, uh, over this side, bearably. So what I did here, uh, the boxes, uh, this is called the rule of thirds. Uh, so basically you will divide the, the canvas into three parts and on the, on the edges of the three parts right here and here, these four parts over here, you can put uh, the, you can actually put the, the characters or some main points of this, of the design, uh, the focal point. And uh, usually you start the 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 vanishing point or the 
horizon line around these parts of the of the design so i would probably just adjust the adjust it around here probably uh yeah that's i think that's better mm -hmm. so this is the horizon line the end of the uh when you're standing uh on the scene you will see at the end of the uh the edge of the design so this is where okay so we'll start uh i'll start putting some uh some guides for this uh mm -hmm. so the and also i will also start probably doing the sketch for the character uh my main character from monster hunter rise uh, so yeah, so this is just a rough sketch. Let's go back to the audio book. Hopefully you were enjoying the the story. Uh, I for one I really like the, how it how this thing started because uh, it's just uh, of <laughs> it's full of bull crap or what you uh, it's just the the god who who took the get who took the kids. He's just, he's just really stupid. In the entire series, I every time I. Uh, we go to his perspective. It's really uh, he does some really stupid stuff, and uh, he will know more about his uh, his shenanigans and some stuff that he did that uh, caused the main character some really misfortunate misfortunate uh, circumstance. And but guys, he will one day. Uh, it's not uh, just spoiler alert. <laughs> he will one day uh, gain the upper hand against this god, and just. Uh, keep reading the the story. It will be very nice. Trees were unable to unify properly and eventually divided, giving rise to conflict once again. Even when countries were able to maintain peace between each other, incidents like the appearance of powerful demons caused even greater casualties than war. There existed gods who directly controlled that world and led its people. However, to protect the world from a demon king who had previously appeared in another world, they had to summon heroes from other worlds and fight the demon king together with them. Ever since then, they had been unable to regain their former power. It was necessary for this world's advancement to continue through any means necessary. It was currently in a state of stagnation, but one event could trigger a sudden decline in development. As the world declined, fewer souls passed through the circle of transmigration, posing a danger even for Rod Corti. As Rod Corti wondered what to do, he heard rumors from gods who managed other worlds. The rumor was that if you took a soul from another world that retained all of their former memories, bestowed cheat-like powers upon them and had them reborn into a world, that world would develop in a good direction at an alarming pace. It was a rumor that he wanted to believe in. It seemed absurd to think that a single person with memories of their past life and cheat-like powers could have such a large influence on an entire world. Even so, it was worth testing. In the problematic world, the gods had summoned several heroes from other worlds to battle the demon king. It was a direct summoning of living inhabitants of other worlds, so they had not received divine gifts such as cheat-like abilities. Even so, they were victorious against the demon king. Furthermore, most of the heroes lost their lives in the battle, but even in their short time on this world, they had made a lasting impact. And there would be no better time to test this rumor than now, when there were no demon kings or evil gods. With no events like battles between gods and abnormal beings that could challenge them, if heroes were granted cheat-like powers, they would surely have an even more profound impact on the world's development. Fortunately, using his position, Rod Corti could feed the souls of the dead back into the problematic world, causing their rebirth into that world as many times as he desired. It wasn't a difficult task to have them retain memories of their previous lives, either. As for the cheat-like abilities, he could prepare them by using his ordinary god powers that he had been saving. However, he was uneasy with the idea of reincarnating only one person. Just in case, he should use a hundred people. And with good timing, just as Rod Corti had finished his preparations, around a hundred Japanese people died. According to what he'd heard, they were inhabitants of an island country with advanced knowledge of science and economics, as well as a peculiar culture. With nobody around to object, Rod Corti decided to exclude the souls of the evil people from among those of the Japanese people who had died on the ferry and reincarnate the rest. However, they would be reincarnated not on the problematic world, but in origin. 
for the purpose of executing his plan perfectly, Rod Corty chose origin as a place where the souls could live through a practice run so that they could accumulate knowledge and experience. Once these souls completed their second lives in origin, he would grant them new powers and destinies once more and have them reincarnated again on the problematic world. With this much time and effort spent on this plan, it would surely go well. However, not being used to having to do such tasks, Rod Corty had made one small error. Even a god could not predict that this error would cause his expectations to come crashing down one day. As if foreshadowing such events, a soul appeared before Rod Corty, having finished its second life. Rod Corty had expected some differences in their timings depending on the order in which he had reincarnated them. But given the expected lifespan of a human, this was far too quick a reunion. However, he had predicted that this soul would be the first to appear. As I expected, you were unable to complete your entire lifespan, Amamiya Hiroto. Rod Corty, the one that had appeared was the 101st reincarnated soul, without any power, destiny or fortune. It was the soul of Amamiya Hiroto. The soul of Amamiya Hiroto that had appeared before Rod Corty was pitifully wounded, and covered in sinister mana. I'll kill them, I'll kill those guys, even if I'm reborn I'll never forgive them. That goes for you as well. Hiroto, with no care for the fact that Rod Corty was a god, Hiroto threw a punch at him. Amamiya Hiroto was born in a military state in origin. Rod Corty had told him that he would never live a blessed life. Those words became reality, he experienced nothing but misfortune from the moment he was born. His mother was a prostitute and his real father had abandoned her before he was born. His mother found a new lover who made the decision to sell the baby Hiroto to buy alcohol, to which she didn't object. The ones who bought Hiroto was a laboratory that carried out illegal research. As he was examined there, it became clear that he was more inept at magic than any ordinary person in origin. In origin, there were seven attributes of magic that could be used, the four elements of earth, water, fire and air as well as the additional attributes of light, life and spatial magic. It was common knowledge that everyone had at least one attribute out of those seven that they had an affinity for. However, Hiroto demonstrated no aptitude for any attribute whatsoever, let alone any affinity. In other words, he was an existence that defied logic, inferior to even an ordinary person. But the people of the laboratory realized that Hiroto owned a vast mana pool that was far greater than that of an ordinary person. He had incredible amounts of mana even though he had no aptitude for any attribute. This was a bizarre contradiction in the eyes of the researchers. And among them, one suddenly came up with an idea. It's not that this experimental subject has no affinity for any attribute. Rather, there's another attribute that we've not discovered that this subject has an affinity for. Isn't that possible? Researcher, from that point, their research began. It was around then that Hiroto's memories of his previous life returned. After several years of research with Hiroto as a human subject, they discovered the eighth attribute, the attribute of death. The researchers had Hiroto learn the death attribute magic that they had discovered and reconstructed his entire body, including his brain, to continue their research and experiments. Die. Hiroto, however, the circumstances that Hiroto was in ended with one word. When he had regained his memories of his previous life, his body was filled with explosives, his life had been taken hostage. And around him were the researchers that viewed him not as a human being, but as an experimental animal. Hiroto no longer needed basic education such as language or how to read and write, but he had no freedom whatsoever. Not only that, if he showed any signs of rebellion, he would receive an electrical shock and be left convulsing on the floor. He spent his days eating food that was nutritious, yet more plain than food fed to prisoners, and doing exactly as the researchers instructed him to in whatever experiments they desired to carry out. Even though he had awakened his ability to use death attribute magic, he couldn't leave the laboratory. Hiroto covered his body in death attribute magic and desperately gathered power in his hand. Completely inept with any other attribute of magic, through sheer effort, he covered himself in death attribute magic. He developed many different uses for his magic, contributing towards the laboratory, the researchers and the country they belonged to. However, right until the end, Hiroto's work went unrewarded. This was because the researchers were aware of his usefulness to them, but they also feared his insubordination. As Hiroto's usefulness increased, this fear also grew. The explosives in his body were buried not only in the heart, but also in the brain. His torso housed a GPS to prevent his escape. His right eyeball was being replaced by an artificial eye containing a special camera and a listening device was planted in his mouth and ears to catch even the smallest whisper. His food intake was limited so that he would never have more physical strength than necessary. 
His room was small and he was never allowed to leave it except for experiments. To make him more able to use death attribute magic, to increase the size of his mana pool, they reconstructed his body for a variety of reasons. In order to ensure that he wouldn't somehow make an ally to plan an escape or rebellion, the guards who watched him and the operator that gave them direct orders were rotated often, so that he wouldn't be in contact with any individual in particular for an extended period of time. And finally, they carried out an inhumane procedure on his brain, cutting off his control over his body's mana and making him their puppet. At this time, Doroto wasn't even ten years old. And from this age, he spent over ten more years in this hell where he couldn't even move a single finger of his own accord. Even after about ten years of this situation, Doroto's mind did not cave in. A reason for that would be the souls of the dead that had been attracted to his affinity for the death attribute, who whispered comforting words to him. Another reason was that he had hoped that they would come to rescue him from this hell. However, Hiroto died. He was unable to withstand the reckless experiments carried out by the newer researchers, who were trying to surpass the results produced by their predecessors. It was ironic that through death, Doroto regained his freedom. Through the death of his body, his soul regained its control over his mana. Hiroto turned his own body into an undead to go on a rampage, fueled by his hatred. He tore those who had toyed with his life to pieces and squeezed the researchers that begged for their lives as if they were pieces of wet cloth. He made sport of the military personnel as he killed them. As Hiroto continued rampaging after killing everyone in the laboratory, not satisfied with this revenge, familiar faces appeared before him. Ooh! Hiroto raised his voice in joy at the sight of these dozens of people, as their faces were familiar to him. Their features were a little different, but most of them were his classmates in the same year as him in his previous life. He knew some of them as his teachers. Naru's Narumi was among them as well. They were Hiroto's companions who had been reincarnated in origin with him. They were his hope. One day they would definitely find him, they would definitely come to rescue him. For the past twenty years, Hiroto had never stopped believing that. They were a little late, but he wasn't one to complain. Let's celebrate our reunion, let's redo our second life. Leaving that. They were a little late, but he wasn't one to complain. Let's celebrate our reunion, let's redo our second lives, I'm sure it's possible now that all of these companions are here, he thought. Trembling in joy, Doroto took one step towards them. Everyone, commence attack. However, at the command of a young man who appeared to be the leader of his companions, Doroto was struck by simultaneously released magical attacks. Wait. Why are you attacking me? I'm your ally, I'm one of your companions. Hiroto's screams were drowned out by blazing hellfire, blades of wind, piercing cold and devastating lightning. Hiroto, who had approached his companions with no thoughts of defending himself, was completely bewildered as he fell, his body fatally wounded. That was surprisingly quick. Considering that we heard that a powerful undead had risen. Well, there's thirty out of us hundred heroes gathered here. There's no way we'd have trouble with that. Above Hiroto's head, familiar voices were having a conversation. Hundred people? A hundred people, you said. No. There were a hundred and one of us, including me, there's a hundred and one. He wanted to shout those words, but his throat had already been cut, he could not even let out a moan. His right arm was completely burned and blackened. His left arm had gone flying off somewhere else. His legs had been torn off at some point, he could see his left leg in the corner of his vision. His head and torso were in a terrible state as well. The reason we didn't have any trouble is because this undead let its guard down. Death attribute magic what a terrifying magic. Looking in the direction of this voice with the only eyeball that he could move, Hiroto saw Naru's Narumi standing there. She had matured more than she had in her previous life, she was now an adult woman. Ah, he's another victim of this laboratory. Next to her stood a young man, the leader who had given the attack command. Judging from the distance between them, he knew that this man and Narumi were intimate with each other. I'm sure he wants us to kill him. You're right, Hiroto. Narumi, Hiroto? Hiroto? Amimiya Hiroto? This guy is Amimiya Hiroto? Let's at least finish him off so that he doesn't have to suffer anymore. Narumi, that's the best thing we can do for him. Narumi. Let's do it together. Doroto, don't, censored, with me. Why the hell are you the one standing there? You, who took my share of power, destiny and fortune. Why are you trying to finish me off with such a heroic look on your face? Why is it you, why the, censored, did it have to be you? It's all your fault that my second life was such a disaster. 
Hundred heroes? You're treating me as an outcast and killing me? Doroto let out a cry, but he was unable to withstand the bright light coming from the hands of Hiroto and Narumi and turned into dust. Everything is your fault. You call yourself a god? Second life, my ass. You cast me into a hell even worse than my previous life. Hiroto, Hiroto's fist had a black fog-like substance coiling around it, but it didn't even graze Rod Corti. That was just the result of the difference in power between man and god. I am aware that I did a terrible thing to you. Rod Corti, saying the same thing as he had said before, Rod Corti explained the circumstances he was facing to Hiroto's furious soul. The information was transmitted to him directly by some godly power and permeated through his mind in an instant. So you're saying there's a third time? Doroto, that is correct. This is something that has been prepared since you were first reborn in origin. This time, you do not have the choice to refuse, and I cannot interrupt it. Rod Corti, what absurd nonsense this was. However, to Hiroto, this nonsense was like finding a ship when he needed to cross. I see then in the next world, I'll kill them. The ones who killed me, I won't leave any of them alive. I died first, right? In that case, I'm going to be the one who reincarnates for the second time first, so I'll have the advantage. This time, I'll be the one who kills them. Doroto, I'll become an adult before them, gain power and then find Amemia Hiroto and the others among the children and kill them all. That should be possible even for someone like me with no special power. Now hurry up and grant me all that stuff, Kami-sama. This time you've got a destiny and fortune for me, right? After all, I'm the one who died first, there's no way you're going to get me confused for someone else again, right? Doroto, I have no power to bestow onto you. Rod Corti, as if lightly pushing against Hiroto's soul, Rod Corti pressed his palm into Hiroto. Eh? Doroto, with just that, Hiroto began to speed up and fall towards somewhere. At this point, the only thing I can do is add something. I cannot give you a power. Rod Corti, why? I'm the only one with nothing again, how is that possible? Doroto, because I cannot allow the others to be killed by you. Rod Corti, Rod Corti spoke to Hiroto as he grew smaller and smaller, apologizing. If you kill the others, the world's development will be hindered. Your death on origin was the product of a great amount of misfortune. The same goes for the fact that Amemiya Hiroto and the others were unaware of your existence, even until the very end. But even if I say that, you will not be satisfied. Rod Corti, after Hiroto had died on the ship, before he was reincarnated, he had been standing at the edge of where all of the souls had gathered. Because of that, nobody had seen Hiroto. Furthermore, there had only been one person to refuse to be reincarnated in a new world. And the final point was that he had been the very last person to be reincarnated. Because of these things. Amemiya Hiroto and the others had explained his absence by thinking comma he must have somehow survived and didn't die with you so must have refused to be reincarnated, like that other person. In addition, the repeated experiments on Hiroto's body had changed the shape of his face completely, to the point that Narumi hadn't even been able to recognize him. All of this misfortune was caused by my own clumsiness. I wished for you to look forward and live on without giving up or resenting anyone, but unfortunately you were put on a path that made that impossible. Through your discovery of death attribute magic and development of new magic, you contributed towards Origin's advancement. I hope that you can forgive me for being unable to repay you in any way and forcing you to endure a third life of misfortune. Rod Corti But even as Hiroto's soul grew more distant, Rod Corti could feel Hiroto telling him that this would never be forgiven. Therefore, all I can do is to have you give up on your foolish revenge before you can commit any sin and hope that you will quickly end your own life. Rod Corti, and then, in the palm of Rod Corti's hand, something like a ball of slime appeared. In the next moment, it hit Hiroto's body. Question mark. Doroto, as Hiroto screamed in agony in response to the violent pain, Rod Corti spoke. This is a curse. It can never be lifted. With this curse, you will never be able to gain new powers even in this new world. However, I promise you that for your fourth life I will erase all of your painful memories and return you to the normal circle of transmigration. Rod Corti, with no time to object to Rod Corti's undesirable promise, Doroto's mind went blank. Chapter 1, The Beginning of the Third Time Amemiya Hiroto has been reincarnated. Okay guys, so, I'm back. So I'm doing the sketch right now. Um, so I, as you can see I did the... Uh, perspective guide 
and uh, hopefully this is the right thing because I usually uh, I suck at uh, doing perspective <laughs> and so um, right now hopefully that uh, everything will go well uh, I'll just need to sketch the the character first and then the the background behind her yeah uh, I'll probably put her in a different layer and put the the background in a different layer also so that uh, when I do the design there won't be any clashes when I try to erase something mm -hmm. so yeah anyways the for the story yeah so that's how it happens he got reincarnated twice and now he's uh, going for his third life in a different world this time he's going to be in a fantasy world after going through that sci-fi world that he was been he's been experimented and now uh hiroto will be <laughs> having a a different style of lifestyle because uh there will be some changes that will ha will happen that the god was not expecting to happen so this will be the start of his uh ascension or something or uh the change for his life and he will uh i would i would really say that i really enjoyed the story and how this developed okay so i'll continue the story on and i'll continue with my drawing also Hated in lambda amamiya hiroto has been cursed by the god of transmigration rod Corti. i think i heard this kind of announcement inside my head but i don't really remember too well in a state of being neither awake nor asleep, my consciousness gradually begins to take shape. Where is this place? What kind of situation am I in now? Though I get the feeling that I'm alive. But I don't have a good idea of what kind of circumstances I'm in. Even if I open my eyes, only darkness fills my vision and my arms and legs aren't moving well, as if I'm in the middle of a dream. My entire body is submerged in a warm fluid, and I can't breathe. But I don't feel any discomfort from this. It's like I've become a fish. Surely it's not possible that I've been reincarnated as something other than a human? It's possible, since I've been cursed, after all. Things might work out if I'm still a human, at least, but if I've become an animal or a fish then I have no idea what I'm supposed to do. But fortunately, my suspicions are proven to be wrong. I can hear a voice. It's not crying or shouting, it's a gentle, singing voice. The sound is strangely muffled, so I can't make out the lyrics properly but I can feel the emotion in the song. Love. I see, I'm inside the womb. I'm a fetus right now. It seems that the God's curse isn't able to influence me before I'm reborn, at least. From the fragments of information about the situation that Rod Corty put in my mind before I was reincarnated, Lambda seems to be a world with swords and magic. I might be some other species like an elf or a dwarf, but as long as I'm a sentient being, I don't have a problem with that. Is it just my imagination? This song sounds kind of like Japanese, and then my consciousness melts away again. The next time my consciousness returns, I've already been born. You're always quiet, aren't you, Vandaly? It's good that you are, but you're allowed to cry from time to time, you know? I quietly look up at the woman who's holding me and speaking to me. I suppose Vandaly is my new name. It's a lot better than the serial number I was assigned in origin. And this person must be my third mother. She seems much better than the one I had in origin as well. By the time I was self-aware in origin, I'd already been sold, so I have no complaints about this beginning to my life. Considering I have a curse in place of a God's blessing, this could be called a miracle. Well then, what kind of environment have I been born into? It seems my mother is a dark elf. The mother reflected in Vandaly's eyes was a woman in her early twenties with golden hair and dark brown skin. She was a beautiful woman with pleasant features. Vandaly could have high hopes for his own appearance if this person was his mother. The tips of her ears were pointed. Even Vandaly, who had only just been reborn into this world, could guess that she was a member of the dark-skinned dark elf race. Well, it was not entirely impossible that she was simply a tanned elf. Well, if that's the case, I suppose it makes sense that she lives in a cave, huh? In a cave, huh? Indeed, the two of them were not in a cave-like house but an actual cave. There was a door and furs are spread out across the floor in place of a carpet, but it wasn't a particularly civilized home. But the elves in fantasy stories on earth were generally people that live in harmony with nature, 
so perhaps this kind of thing was normal for them. Well, the more important problem is my own body. His mother's warm arms were wrapped around his fragile body. He looked at her soft skin that reminded him of chocolate, and then at his own plump, useless hands. His hands were as white as silk. Why is my color different? Though my ears do seem to be pointed. His mother was a dark elf, but his skin was white. Could it be that he wasn't a dark elf himself? He didn't know how dark elves' bodies change over the course of their lives. Could it be that they were born with white skin that turned darker as they grew into adults? Or could it be that this person was not biologically his mother? Are you curious as to why your mommy's skin is a different color? You're clever, aren't you, Vandaly? To notice that already. But don't worry. Vandaly, you just look a lot like your daddy, but you are definitely your mommy, Darsa's son. Darsa, as Darsa, Vandaly's mother, smiled gently, her words dispelled his doubts. He realized that he was a child of mixed blood, born to parents of different races. There was a chance that Darsa was lying, but he had no intention of doubting her. He wanted to simply enjoy the love that he was being given and feel at ease, rather than spend his time and emotional endurance on doubting her words. And sleep, and so Darsa lulled Vandaly to sleep. As a three-month-old, Vandaly was a good son who didn't cause any trouble for Darsa, who was going through her first experience raising a child. Ah Vandaly, when he was hungry, he made a noise like this and patted his stomach or pointed at Darsa's chest and complained. When his diaper needed changing, he made a similar noise and patted his own hips. Yes here is mummy's breast you're so well behaved, Vandaly Darsa. As Darsa raised Vandaly up in her arms and exposed her nipple to feed him her milk, she thought comma what a good boy. Of course, she knew that this wasn't normal. That he was too clever. But she didn't do anything to make her own son uncomfortable. Maybe it's because he takes after his father after that person. She suspected that the intelligence of her three-month-old son was due to his father's blood. That and the fact that she had recently often been feeling some strange manner coming from Vandaly only gave her more reason to believe that this was the case. His father's race was more proficient at using magic than dark elves. What bothers me more is the fact that he doesn't laugh or cry I wonder if he feels anxious because he doesn't have a father. What bothered Darsa was the fact that Vandaly didn't laugh or cry like a normal infant. When her beloved son was hungry or even when she tickled him, he was always as expressionless as a doll. She had thought that he was just in a bad mood at first, but it seemed that wasn't the case. It also didn't seem to be the case that his emotions were simply underdeveloped. She had once spotted him silently crying with an empty expression. On that occasion she had thought that he might be sick and applied all the healing magic that she knew, but it seemed that he had simply been crying after having a scary nightmare. But the thing that bothers me the most is when I give you my breast. Does mommy's breast not taste nice? Darsa, what bothered Darsa the most about her son's behavior was that when she went to breastfeed him, he didn't suck on her breast straight away, but instead let his eyes wander without moving for a while first. He drank the milk in the end, but Darsa was worried that there was something wrong with her own milk. Vandaly, who was in the middle of the important task of sucking milk from his mother's nipple, was filled with feelings of embarrassment and guilt. It's not easy being an infant, huh? One would normally be happy and proud to have such a young and beautiful mother. However, on the inside, he was a man who had lived about 37 years over his two previous lives, so he had mixed feelings about it. Though his body was that of an infant, his mind was that of an adult so he felt overly conscious about it. He had been especially conscious of members of the opposite sex since he was a high schooler on earth. I wonder how the others felt? In origin, I was about ten months old when my memories returned. Had the others who had been reborn in origin felt embarrassment when their mother changed their diapers? But I can't make my mother worry about it forever. I'll just have to get used to it as soon as possible. Vandaly had already imprinted in his mind that Darsa, his third mother, was his mother. He had no discomfort with this fact. In any case, despite this being his third life, this was the first time he was experiencing a mother's love it would be impossible for him to reject it. And so, at first, he tried his best to act like a normal infant but it was impossible. It was impossible for him to act like an infant when he was a teenager on the inside. And for some reason, he found himself unable to laugh or cry. He couldn't change his facial expression at all. At first, he had thought his facial muscles were paralyzed, but he found that his mouth and eyelids moved normally. But they didn't move naturally. He could only move them when he put conscious effort into it. Was this because of the curse? 
Well, I'll ask mother about my expression not changing when I'm able to speak there's all kinds of problems, but I've learned quite a lot during the past two months as well. Darsa wasn't aware that Vandali understood her words, so she hadn't explained her past or current situation in detail, but he had a general idea from having lived with her for two months. First, it seemed that Darsa's husband, Vandali's father, was a member of a greatly feared race. As a mixed child of that race, Vandali knew that he would likely be the target of discrimination and persecution. This was the reason why Darsa was living in this cave that she had dug out using spiritual magic in a forest away from where other people lived. It was no wonder that he had never seen a single person in the two months he had been here other than his own mother. I know that she's planning to return the Dark Elf village once I've grown up to some extent. And that this place is the country of Mig, a part of the Amid Empire in the northwest part of the Barn Gaia continent. It seemed that something would work out if she returned to the Dark Elf village, so for now, her objective was probably to gather strength for that purpose. For that reason, even though Vandalie wasn't even able to crawl yet, he began training himself in using magic. The death attribute magic that he had become able to use at will during his previous life. It would surely be helpful for his journey with his mother, or so Vandalie thought. But for some reason, he couldn't use it very well. Is this because my body's still that of an infant? Or is it because of the curse? He considered this possibility. But giving up now because he couldn't use his magic properly wasn't an option. Because for Vandali, who didn't have any cheat like powers or aptitude for any other types of magic, this death attribute magic was his only weapon. It would be nice if I could see Vandali's status. Dasa, Vandali was about a month and a half old when he heard these words from Dasa. Status? Vandali was unsuccessfully trying to use his death attribute magic and was wishing that he could at least be able to crawl across the floor while keeping his head raised when he heard these from his mother. This isn't a game, he thought, but he was surprised when his own status was displayed inside his head. Name, Vandali, Race, Damp, Dark Elf, Age, Zero Years Old, Title, None, Job, None, Level, Zero, Job History, None, Attributes, Vitality, Twelve, Mana, 100 million, strength, 10, agility, 1, stamina, 25, intelligence, 20, passive skills, superhuman strength, level 1, rapid healing, level 1, active skills, none, curses, experience gained in previous life not carried over cannot learn existing jobs unable to gain experience points independently, wow, my mana is no joke. Also, it seems my father was a vampire. And I have three curses, just how badly does that god want me to kill myself? There were several things displayed on Vandalie's status that surprised him. To start with, his race had been set as damp. If that meant the same thing in Lambda as it did on Earth, that meant that he was a half-vampire. I see, that explains why she has to live in this hidden place. I don't know what religions there are in Lambda, but I doubt they'd be very welcoming to a mixed blood child of a vampire. Isn't it actually quite likely that they'll treat me like a monster and try to exterminate me? At the very least, this is something that might endanger my life. The possibility of facing discrimination and prejudice due to being a damp would always be there. Vandalie's life had been set to a hard mode even more extreme than he had expected. The next surprising thing was his mana. There was no MP stat on the status screen, so mana must be the MP stat in the world of Lambda. But the number next to this stat was 100 million. He didn't know what the average for this stat was, but this was surely an abnormal number. Was this what Rod Corty had mentioned earlier, the mana that was housed in the empty frame are left by his lack of cheat-like abilities, fortune and destiny? He had been unable to see anything like a status screen in origin so he had no indication of how vast it was other than the words of the researchers who had said this is over 10,000 times greater than a first class mage exclamation mark but now, seeing the number with his own eyes, it really was amazing. Well, I'm a powerless infant right now, though. No matter how much MP he had, there was no point if he couldn't use magic. He had to relearn how to use his death attribute magic as soon as possible. As for the rest, I seem to have normal strength and my agility is, well, like that. Endurance is like stamina, but intelligence doesn't seem to be as simple as just a measure of how smart I am. It's probably a stat that affects how fast I learn magic, the power of its effects simultaneous casting and how much incantation I'll need to perform it. It could even be related to my willpower. As Vandalie deciphered his status, he understood why his agility was lower than every other stat. He was a month and a half old, but he couldn't even keep his head raised. He couldn't even roll over in bed by himself, let alone crawl. There's no way this kind of infant could be considered agile. 
but on the other hand, considering that he was a level 0 baby, his other stats were pretty high, though not as high as his mana. As expected of a damper, he thought. Next were his skills. From Vandaly's knowledge of games, he knew that passive skills were ones that exhibited their effects without requiring conscious effort while active skills required conscious use. Superhuman strength and rapid healing, huh? These are probably skills that I have because I'm a damp. Something like racial traits that you see in games, I suppose. But as I thought, death attribute magic isn't listed on there. His list of skills was mostly empty because he was still a baby, but Vandaly was someone who had experienced 37 years of life on Earth and in origin. At least the skill of using elementary level death attribute magic that he had managed to learn in his previous life should have been there. The reason it wasn't was probably the three curses listed next. The curse that prevents my experience from my previous life from being carried over, it's probably because of that. That's why I don't have my skills from my previous life or my life before that. The other two curses aren't exactly great news for me, either. Those will make it really hard for me to learn a job or level up. After all, these were curses that Rod Corty had placed on him in order to encourage him to kill himself. Knowing that they were extremely troublesome curses, Vandaly let out a great sigh. But choosing to just die quietly isn't an option. As long as that's the case, I have to keep gathering strength so that I can survive. I'll keep trying to learn to use my death attribute magic today as well, and I it's no use I'm sleepy. Vandaly, like any other six week old infant, was defeated by his sleepiness. You have acquired the death attribute magic skill. This announcement echoed inside Vandaly's head. Three months after his birth, around the time he was finally able to support the weight of his own head with his neck, Vandaly was finally successful in learning death attribute magic. I've spent about two months failing to get my mana to take the form of a spell. I guess this is the result of my hard work. With that said, the only spells he could use was sterilization, a spell that exterminated microscopic organisms within its range, and Bug Killer, a version of the same spell that did the same thing to insects. The other spell he could use was Magic Absorption Barrier, a spell that created a barrier that absorbed mana that it came into contact with, something that had no immediately no visible effects. He wanted to show Darsa, his mother, that he could use magic, but that proved difficult. It would be simple to show her that he could absorb spells, but she never used her spiritual magic in his sight. She probably used spiritual magic to at least create fire to use for cooking, but, with this body that's only just become able to sit up, I can't exactly get a good look around the room. As Vandaly exhales to sit up on his bed, his mother simply laughs, thinking's kind of like an old man, but pays him no further attention. But I'm grateful that she's at least taking me outside. I was about to die of boredom. Perhaps it was because he was now three months old, Darsa had started taking him outside in her arms on sunny days. The reason for this was that she had decided that it would be a good stimulus for a growing child, and her stores of food were also getting dangerously low, so she was going outside to gather more. But Vandaly remembers the way she had been strangely cautious the first time she had taken him outside. She had opened the door to the cave to allow just a little sunlight through and let it shine lightly on Vandaly's fingertip. What a relief! You didn't inherit the vampire's weakness. Darsa, as Vandaly watched Darsa cry out in joy, he was reminded that his father was a vampire. It would have been really troublesome if, as a damper, he had even inherited his father's inability to tolerate sunlight. Well then, let's go outside with mommy from now on, okay? Darsa, as Darsa said that and took Vandaly outside, the sight of the world beyond the cave moved Vandaly to the point that he was at a loss for words, not that he could speak words in the first place. Oh the world nature it's so huge. The outside of the cave was a forest. The air was fresh. The sun was bright, the sky was a transparent blue, the clouds were pure white and the thickly growing trees were bright green. It was the scenery of a forest with no particular features, but Vandaly had spent twenty years imprisoned in a small room before being finished off by Amemiya Hiroto and Narumi. In his eyes, everything seemed to shine beautifully. Fufu, it seems you've taken a liking to being outside. Dasa, his face was expressionless as usual, but Dasa understood from the fact that he was gazing at their surroundings as if he was in a gaze that he was very happy. She began walking around and gathering food. Of course, she didn't do dangerous things like hunting animals using her bound spiritual magic. She gathered edible grasses, fruits and mushrooms and laid some traps to catch animals later. Most of the food she gathered went into her own mouth, while a little was set aside to be made into baby food for Vandaly. I have mixed feelings about this. Once a day, his young, 
beautiful dark elf mother Satsya and fed him a spoonful of food. And with that, the amount of time she spent breastfeeding him decreased. In order to survive from now on and make the journey from this area that was dangerous for a damp to live to the dark elf village, weaning was necessary for Vandali. But even so, growing was a difficult task for him. Incidentally, he enjoyed the taste of his mother's milk more than the baby food. The death attribute magic skill has been upgraded to level 2. The following new skills have been added, status effect resistance, magic resistance, dark vision, blood is sucking. Once Vandali reached 5 months of age, Darsa began leaving him in the cave for hours at a time to go out and gather food from the forest. In a little while, we'll be going to where mommy was born. I have to make preparations for that, so even if you get lonely, bear with it, okay? Darsa, saying that, she left to hunt animals and went to the village, pretending to be a passing adventurer to buy supplies. There were times she didn't come home for half a day at a time, but it was necessary to get the supplies they needed to survive, so there was no helping it. Leaving an infant alone at home for half a day would have been questionable on earth, but Vandali himself had no complaints about it. Because everything was being done for his own protection. With no help from anyone else, Darsa was raising an infant by herself. A troublesome half-vampire child, no less. Judging from the fact that Vandali had not seen his father even once, it seemed that there was no help coming from the vampire community either. Vampires looked down on half-vampires just as much as humans did, if not more. Half-vampires were often the targets of persecution by vampires as well. Even in Japan, where people had a sense of values as human beings, people of mixed foreign blood were discriminated against. It was no surprise that half-bloods of different races in Lambda experienced the same. At this rate, it doesn't seem like I'll be able to see my father's face. The reason being that he was probably no longer alive. Thinking logically without taking emotions into account, it would be a much better choice for Darsa to abandon Vandali. Then she would be able to live a much more peaceful life. That would make her life more carefree, free of responsibility. Once some time passed and her feelings died down, she would be able to live on as if nothing had happened. If she wanted a child, she could easily go to another country or back to the Dark Elf village and find a new man to create one with. Despite this, the likely reason why Dasu had not abandoned Vandali was because she loved his father and Vandali himself. This is a bit of a cliché, but being loved is a truly happy thing. With this happiness driving him on, Vandali continued his hard work. He spent his time awake practicing magic, strengthening his body by exercising his arms and legs and practicing using his voice. The result of this was that his death attribute magic skill had increased and he was able to cast with visible effects that Darsa could see. Wow, to think that you can use magic even though you're still a baby. Va Darsa could see. Wow, to think that you can use magic even though you're still a baby. Vandali, you're a genius, aren't you? How happy it made him for someone to be proud of his increase in skill, for someone to praise him. Though his ability to use other skills seemed to be not the result of his hard work, but his growing up. His status effect resistance was a skill that granted him resistance against poison, sickness, fatigue due to lack of sleep, hunger and other various detrimental or fatal conditions that could be applied to him through magic. This was likely something he had inherited from his vampire father. His magic resistance, a skill that mitigated the damage and other effects that he took from magical attacks, was a racial characteristic of Dark Elves. His mother, Darsa, also had this skill. The dark vision was a characteristic that both of his parents possessed, which allowed him to see even on completely starless nights as if it were daytime. And finally, blood is sucking was self-explanatory. His canine teeth had grown unusually quickly compared to his other teeth it was a skill that he had acquired when fangs had grown on both the top and bottom side of his mouth. They've appeared, after all. Though it might be better for you not to. Vandali Dasa, as Dasa said this upon noticing that her son had grown fangs, she cut the head of the rabbit she had caught with a knife. And then she caught the dripping blood on a wooden plate. Here, try drinking this. Dasa, mother, are you insane? In response to the iron-like smell coming from the plate that had been brought close to his mouth, Vandali looked up at Dasa with half-closed eyes. On earth, blood is sometimes used as an ingredient in sauces and deal or turtle blood is sometimes distilled into wine. I know that, but wouldn't feeding an infant the raw blood of an animal be considered child abuse? I think that would be the case, but she doesn't seem to want to change her mind. Well, I guess I'll try it. It would surely be disgusting. As he thought this, Vandali extended his tongue and drank a little of the rabbit's blood. 
Surprisingly, he didn't think it tasted bad. Huh? I can drink this. It tastes like iron, but it's not as bad as I thought in fact, it's delicious. It hadn't been distilled into wine or had spices added to it to mask the smell, but for Vanderly, the rabbit's blood was as easy to drink as his mother's milk. He was astonished, but Darso explained as she stroked his growing hair. Vanderly, you can drink blood like your daddy. But it doesn't mean you have to drink blood, so even if you're hungry, only drink it if mommy isn't around, okay? Darsa, I see, so I'm a half vampire after all. That explains why dampers are shunned. Well, for now, I'll just think of it as an increase in the variety of my baby food. As Vanderly approached six months of age, he gained the ability to crawl. That day, Darsa had left Vanderly at home and made a long journey to a nearby town. I'm glad mother has taken my unusual intelligence for an infant to be a good thing. Including the fact that he could use magic, Darsa's only response to Vandali's abnormality was a mazing exclamation mark and she had not questioned it or expressed any bewilderment about it. Dampers are amazing, after all. Darsa, because she often said that, it was likely that she thought that all of Vandali's unusual characteristics are due to the fact that he was a damp. He was very thankful that she had not investigated it any further. After all, even if he wanted to explain it, he couldn't speak yet as he was only six months old. He was continuing his practice on using his voice, but he was frustrated that he couldn't form proper words yet. If that wasn't the case, he would want to explain his situation. I'd explain everything about Rod Corti, my previous life and Amemiya Hiroto. In light novels or manga that Vandali had read on Earth, it was common for characters that had been reincarnated in another world to keep that fact a secret but he thought he should break that common pattern. That he should at least tell Dasa, as soon as possible. Because she was his own mother. If this was a normal reincarnation or trip to another world, I'd consider keeping it a secret too. But my situation is different. Because soon, a hundred people from the same world as me will be reincarnated here with cheat-like powers. Amemiya Hiroto and the others, the ones who had abandoned him without even searching for him on origin, the ones who had killed him. Once they died in origin, they would surely be reincarnated here in Lambda. Vandali didn't know when that would happen. When Vandali had died in origin, they looked to be around 20 years old. So unless they were involved in an accident or something, it would take at least 50 years. But it wasn't certain that time flowed at the same rate in both origin and Lambda. It could even be that for each day that passed in Lambda, a year passed in origin. Well, it probably wasn't that extreme, but they would definitely be reincarnated in Lambda one day. Even Rod Corti himself couldn't prevent that from happening. The problem is what Rod Corti will say to them before they're reincarnated. I screamed to him that I'd kill them. So if they were to be reincarnated here before I died, he'd at least warn them about me. After all, Rod Corti's goal was to have them develop this world. It would be problematic if they died before that happened, so he would definitely warn them about Vandali. In that case, they would see Vandali as a threat and be cautious of him. In their first lives, they were Japanese people raised in the peaceful country of Japan, so it would be fine if they wanted to talk about things or apologize for what happened in origin. But Vandali couldn't say for sure that there wouldn't be any of them who would kill him upon finding him, to simply eliminate the threat. Just as Vandali himself had led an unimaginably wretched life, they might have experienced something like that as well. Even if they were heroes there, if they had to deal with evil terrorists or criminal organizations for extended periods of time, who knew what kind of state they would be in? Yes, heroes. These were unlucky. I heard them just before I died, but if I'm not mistaken, they were notified that an undead had appeared and come to kill me. If that's the case, they were probably putting their cheat-like powers to use and being international heroes or something. Like the ones in American superhero comics and Vandali himself was a half-vampire, a damp. If they displayed the pacifism, philanthropism and respect for human rights that they did as Japanese people, there wouldn't be a problem. But if they were affected by the anti-vampire, anti-damp values of Lambda, that would be dangerous. Facing a hundred people with cheat-like powers as enemies wouldn't be an easy task. The one getting caught up in all of this would be Dasa. It would be too dangerous and unreasonable to expect her to face that without knowing anything. This was why Vandali thought that he had to explain the situation to her as soon as possible. If mother separates herself from me because of that reason, then there's nothing I can do about that. It was only for half a year, but Darsa was the first mother that Vandali had known. He had never been loved as much as she had loved him. Well, if possible, I don't want to be separate from her. 
For that purpose, my revenge on them well, it's impossible to forgive them or reconcile at this point, but I'd be content if they just kept their distance from me. This was the extent to which Vandali was attached to Dasa. It was also partially because his thoughts had become strangely clear after he had been reborn, but he thought that he could give up on his revenge for the sake of his mother. After I grow up a little more, I'll explain everything to Dasa. And then if I can use the knowledge and death attribute magic that I have from my time on earth and in origin to live a fulfilled life, I'll be happy with that. And if I can just watch those guys with cheat-like abilities put all their effort into this world, then it'll be fine. Vandali thought this as he continued crawling across the floor to continue his physical training, but he felt suddenly hungry. I guess I'll just drink some blood. He lifted the rabbit that Dasa had captured alive from its cage. Though he was only six months old, he was still adept with the superhuman strength skill, so it was simpler than he thought. He used sterilization and bug killer in the struggling rabbit to sanitize it and then bit into it. Blood is delicious, but mother's milk is still better. Sating his hunger by mercilessly sucking the blood from the convulsing rabbit, Vandali longed for his mother's breast. That day, the time that Darsa was supposed to come back passed, but she did not return. Name, Vandali, race, Damber, dark elf, age, 0.5 years old, nickname, non, job, non, level, 0, job history, non, attributes, vitality, 18, mana, 100 million 600, strength, 27, agility, 2, stamina, 33, intelligence, 25, passive skills, superhuman strength, level 1, rapid healing, level 1, death attribute magic, level 2, new, status effect resistance, level 1, new, magic resistance, level 1, new, dark vision, new, active skills, blood is sucking, level 1, new, curses, experience gained in previous life not carried over cannot learn existing jobs unable to gain experience points directly. Chapter 2, Hard Mode Begins, Insanity Takes Over. Even when Van Okay guys, um, so far we're having some good progress here. Uh, yeah, uh, I'll be adjusting a lot of things after I add the, uh, the values for this one. But right now the shape of the sketch is pretty much going in a good, good direction, I think. Mm -hmm. Character needs a little bit more work for the sketching. The armor is very, very detailed, so I'm hoping I can make it uh, a bit simpler and um, less detailed and less um, eye-catchy. <laughs> so, yeah. So the character here, uh, which is holding a shrimp, a big shrimp, that would, will be my avatar also. <laughs> so my avatar for my game and my avatar for an artist will be meeting up in this canvas. Mm -hmm. There's a ruin, a castle ruin in the background, a tent, and the beach. So this is pretty much the idea. I'll be adding uh, the values after making it black and white later just like this but uh, I'm more more precise uh, values effect once that is done I'll start coloring or probably finalizing the sketch mm -hmm. using a line art uh, line art pen yeah that's pretty much uh, the plan so far mm, what time is it? Uh, 10.56 Okay, so far I would like to continue more uh, but the time is a bit uh, late already so, so okay guys, I think the, I'll end it here I hope you enjoyed the the style, uh, the, the, the drawing and also the, uh, the the light novel that I was reading uh, playing in the background uh, so the death mage uh, <laughs> so so far the story has been uh, we introduced to us uh, he went through two reincarnations and now living a life in a fantasy world and so far he is having a really rough time from his two lives 
when he was a normal boy, he got abused by his uncle and his aunt. And when he got to the next world, he was experimented with a uh, scientist and wasn't able to use his powers. And he was even killed by his uh, so-called people that were supposed to know him. <laughs> and then now he's living in this uh, fantasy world. And the good thing is that he managed to meet, uh, he was born in a very good, uh, uh, by a very good mother. Uh, so Daza was a, uh, Darsha is a very good uh, uh, mother for uh, what's his name again now? Uh, Vandali, yeah. Now his name is Vandali. So let's see what uh, is happening or is going to happen next time uh, as I continue reading this and as I continue making this design. Hopefully, that you guys would uh, come again and watch this and listen to the story. <laughs> okay, so thank you guys for watching and I will see you again next time. Okay. Goodbye.